Today we're going to look at a classic example that would generally be taught in an introductory real analysis course, or in some universities this is known as an advanced calculus class. And so this is known as Tomei's function, or Tomei's function, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, sometimes called a ruler function. So how do we define this function? So we'll define the function from the open interval 0, 1 to r, although we could extend this to all real numbers, but we're going to stick with the open interval 0, 1. And it's going to be defined by the following rule. f of x is equal to 1 over q. If x is rational and is written in lowest terms as p over q. And then f of x is equal to 0 if x is irrational. And then what we'll prove here is that for all a on the open interval, the limit as x goes to a of f of x is in fact equal to 0. Notice that means that this function will be continuous at irrational numbers because in that case the limit will equal the function value and it will be discontinuous at rational numbers because in that case the limit will be not equal to the function value. Okay, so what's the idea here? Well, I think the idea can be summed up in the following sentence and we'll draw a picture containing it as well. We can make denominators arbitrarily large by squeezing towards some number. And what I really mean is all denominators in a certain open interval. And so here I've laid out the interval from 0 to 1 and I've put every rational number with denominator of 2, 3, 4, or 5 here. And let's observe that no matter where I pick a number between 0 and 1, of course as long as it's not equal to one of these rational numbers, I can make sure that the denominator is always less than, or I should say bigger than 6, or bigger than or equal to 6. For example, if I pick a number right here, so that's between a half and two-fifths, or that's three-fifths, then notice if I pick an open interval, perhaps from here to here, I'm guaranteed that that open interval contains rational numbers whose denominators are necessarily bigger than or equal to 6. And that's because, well, notice I just listed all of the rational numbers whose denominators are less than 6 on the board, and I just kept away from them. And I can do this regardless of where I start on this open interval from 0 to 1, as long as I don't start on one of those rational numbers indicated. So, for example, if I start between a fifth and a fourth, well, then I've just got a tiny open interval in there. If I start between a quarter and a third, let's say this point right here, well then I can make an open interval here as well. And I think you can visually see that this is possible regardless of where we start between 0 and 1. Okay, so now let's jump into the proof of this result and see how we can use this idea. Now before we jump into the proof, I'd like to ask you to put a thumbs up on the video if you're enjoying it and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps us out. Okay, so the strategy to prove this limit result over here will be to use the epsilon delta definition of the limit. So in other words, the precise definition of a limit. And so let's recall that real quick. So we say that the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l if for all epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero such that for all x on the deleted open neighborhood, a minus delta to a plus delta. And what I mean by that is that for all x in the interval a minus delta to a plus delta, except when x is equal to a, we have the absolute value of f of x minus l less than epsilon. Okay, so let's see how we can use that. Okay, so let's say we are given some point A on our open interval and let's say we are given some epsilon bigger than zero. Okay, cool. So now what we wanna do is take some natural number, I'll call it capital N, so that the reciprocal of that natural number, one over capital N is less than epsilon. Okay, nice. And now I wanna do the following. 
So let's define delta the following way. So let's define delta to be equal to one half of the minimum of the following kind of crazy set. So that set will be of the following form. So we'll have the absolute value of a minus a half, the absolute value of a minus a third, the absolute value of a minus two thirds, dot, 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 the absolute value of a minus one over n, the absolute value of a minus two over n, and then dot, 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 finally, the absolute value of a minus n minus one over n. Okay, cool. So notice that delta is bigger than zero, and that's because delta is the minimum of a finite number of positive numbers. And so since this is a finite set and we're taking the minimum of a finite set of positive numbers, then we're okay. And you might say, well, wait a minute. Let's say that A happens to be one of those rational numbers that I've written there. Well, in that case, in the case that A is one of those rational numbers, what I want to do is just exclude it from this set. Okay. So what's the point of this big, crazy way of defining delta? Well, it essentially carefully does that idea of proof that we talked about before. And that is every rational number in the deleted neighborhood a minus delta to a plus delta minus that central point a has a denominator strictly bigger than n. And that's because, well, notice that all of these are the distances of a to every rational number whose denominator is less than or equal to n. So we're bounding a away from all of these rational numbers, uh, unless, of course, a is one of those and then we delete it out of there. Okay, so anyway, that gets the job done there. And so now let's notice the following. If x is on our deleted open neighborhood, x minus delta, or sorry, a minus delta to a plus delta minus the singleton a, then f of x is going to be less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1. Now, how do we know that? Well, notice that the denominator of x is going to be bigger than or equal to n plus 1. And so that means that, well, f of x, well, what does it do? It extracts the denominator. And so that means that f of x is less than or equal to 1 over n plus 1. The biggest it can be is exactly 1 over n plus 1. And furthermore, I would say most of the time, f of x is equal to 0 because most of the time, x will be irrational number or an irrational number. So at worst, it's rational, and that value is equal to 1 over n plus 1, and at best, it's irrational, and it's already equal to 0. But anyway, in the end, we see that 1 over n plus 1 is strictly less than 1 over n, which is less than epsilon. But notice, that's exactly what we need from up here to show that, yes, the limit of this function is equal to 0. And that's a good place to stop.